Welcome to another Pralaya Media podcast. This time we're interviewing Stan from Suffer Yourself. They've got a new album coming out called Riptide and it's going to be released on Aesthetic Death Records. Right, so yeah, my my like, my name is Stanislav, but I prefer Stan. It's like, I'm, as well, I'm well, I'm living in Europe for a, quite a longer time, so like Stan is preference for naming myself. And I'm from uh, from Suffer Yourself band, so we play uh, kind of a mix of uh, uh, death doom with funeral touches. I think like on a slightly darker side because the um, the whole palette of the genre is. Uh, Quite, quite big as we know. Um, so we are kind of on the darker side of things, closer to uh, Death Metal Origins and to bands like uh, probably Evoken and uh, Disembowelment, something like that. Uh, band consists from uh, four people. So uh, myself and uh, my wife, we are Ukrainians, by the way, originally. Uh, so um, uh, I myself play guitars and vocals. Kate, uh, she's she's playing drums, and we also have uh, two Swedes on board, uh, Lars and Johan. So uh, Lars plays guitar, and Johan is on bass. I read on the Metallum uh, webpage that you started off as a one-man band. So Correct. you're the guy who's writing all the music as well, or how does that work? Yeah, exactly. Um, so the project, it it will we will be actually making as a project. Uh, 10 years, I think, this year in somewhere in November. So it got kicked on on 2011 in Poland as a completely just a studio attempt to uh, get into the uh, back to the kind of music roots. Uh, so I had uh, some sort of a small break after my previous band, mm. uh, like with musical endeavors. So I didn't like uh, particularly composing for a couple of years. And then I just started to work on this slowly. And yeah, pretty pretty quickly the first album emerged from this, and I think uh, the same no the next year after uh, the thing started rolling, uh, I moved back to Ukraine and uh, basically lived there for three years sequential after this, and after that moved to Sweden. And that's why the Metalum has this um, very kind of long description about the origins of the project. How would you describe your music to somebody who's never heard metal at all? Oh, interesting. Interesting question, because if we speak with, like about the uh, metal people in general, so it's more or less transparent what uh, doomish metal mm. is, right? Yeah. But if we speak about completely uh, mm. um, like unintroduced person, I would say... Maybe, maybe, maybe not the kind of uh, stuff you may expect in horror movies. Probably not. Uh, that, that's kind of the first thing which popped in my mind. No, uh, but perhaps, uh, perhaps as a as I'm kind of I'm I'm getting the, the right words. So probably uh, in a similar way as that person would um, would check some sort of avant-garde paintings in the museum. Maybe, maybe like that. Mm-hmm. With some uh, with some details which are uh, somewhat not pleasant to average uh, average uh, connoisseur or average person checking this out. And this is also reflected in the lyrics. Yeah, indeed, indeed, absolutely. So I think if if um, uh, average average person will check the lyrics uh, by themselves, some some questions may pop up about like like what was behind that and why it's this kind of dark. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's actually what my uh, next question or why, what what drives you to make this or why why this the obsession with the darkness? Um, so I think uh, because as well um, uh, during like a minor my uh, lifetime as well uh, I've been on different spectrums of emotions here and there, uh, which is kind of normal for probably everybody, and I found that the uh, the darker side of things, it's kind of way more honest to, to, to some to some extent and also I, I to myself I found that this blend of uh, slowness and some sort of crypticism 
uh, in the music, uh, some sort of this special ambience, uh, which is usually uh, delivered within the genre, uh, is probably exactly how, how, I, how I create the best and how I can deliver uh, my ideas and thoughts and like as well mm, internal impressions in the, in the best way, I think. But do you think that the, the darker feelings are more, I don't know, uh, authentic than lighter feelings? I would say so, yeah, at least from my perspective. Uh, and as well, uh, this is very rooted in a um, uh, kind of search of uh, um, certain, certain, you know, internal uh, things, uh, like uncovering like own fears uh, and in general, like uh, uh, fears within the uh, humanity in general, like a human being uh, within the su suppressed uh, emotions inside. Yeah. Plus, uh, I think, uh, like, a lot of things which people usually don't talk about, like depression or, or violence or murder, death, and all these kind of things, which are usually uh, put aside in, in many kind of uh, societies as well. So this is usually not what's oftenly discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, so as well, I found that um, uh, these kind of topics are exactly what I, I think I would like to... Uh, to dive in and especially uh, also we can add here uh, different um, philosophical questions about uh, meaning of being uh, and uh, also let's say uh, even even cosmic matters about uh, the universe and uh, perhaps uh, spiritual um, experiences too. So uh, the spiritual dimension of, of your music, well, how would you describe that? Uh, I would say uh, that I definitely emphasize on um, exploration of own uh, boundaries on darker side. Uh, uh, like some of the lyrics, especially like the fresh ones, are are focused and, and um, uh, lyrics and musical themes are focused around uh, pain, internal and um, uh, like mental and physical, both of them in any kind of aspects. It can be as well. Uh, you know, mat mental torture of sorts. Yeah. So, and, and spiritually, uh, we also can speak about uh, fighting your your place in, in the universe, like why uh, why the being exists and is it probably even, uh, the existence might be even futile from the universal perspective too. Yeah. So I think that that is the most of emphasis of it. So kind of as well, um, cosmic research of like probably we are, as as a, as, a, as a human race, we're probably a very very minor thing, uh, which probably does not even uh, needs to be bothered about from from the cosmic perspective. Right, it's it's sort of like a Lovecraftian worldview almost, right? You kind of kind of in a way. Uh, I think you're touching the right uh, strings here because um, I was really impressed by some of the uh, Lovecraftian references where he uh, described the. Um, unearthly creatures uh, and the worlds uh, where they come from, where the uh, human morale and uh, human um, perception of things are not relevant at all for these kind of beings or right. creatures. But but is that is that so bad? If you know what I mean, I mean yes. Yeah, so so yes, let's say life is futile and meaningless, but is, is that necessarily a bad thing? Uh, no, actually not. Actually not. Uh, so that's why, as well, um, uh, within within my work, I also try to emphasize that uh, uh, it's it's way better to to open up um, your mind to the uh, futility of it all than to mm. try to struggle it. So it's way more um, better uh, philosophically to acknowledge that many things are uh, basically meaningless. But let, let, so let's say that after you've finished a song and you've finished a theme with, I, mean, I don't know, because I read one one of your lyrics now recently, which seemed to be about the the end of the planet, more or less, or the end of the world. It's, it, was, it wasn't from your new uh, album, because I am got the lyrics for that, but it, I, it's from the ectoplasm. I think it's Darkness Part 1. That's No, that's even from the first uh, first album. Oh. Uh, but I, I would need to say that the first album is uh, some sort of unique in a way because 
there all the lyrics are, are not actually mine, but they're um, I specifically uh, taken the the poems of the known authors of the of the past. So we have uh, Poe there. We have um, a bit of I think uh, no no there is no Lovecraft actually in there. Uh, there is a bit of Lovecraft on ectoplasm particularly, mm-hmm. but on the um, Inner Sanctum album. So. Um, as I mentioned, there was Paul, uh, there was uh, Rimbaud, uh, and a couple of other guys. So particularly uh, Darkness, uh, I think it's yeah, it belongs to Byron, actually. Oh, okay. And if you when you probably check the lyrics, you might be you might observe that the um, uh, the basically the wording is quite as well uh, outdated. So it's yeah. very uh, very specific. Right, right. Stuff. Um, Right. And yeah, definitely, it's, it's Byron, and because the poem, it's, uh, and uh, by the way, almost all the songs, uh, probably except the first one in the Sanctum, because that one, uh, the lyrics was written by my friend. Uh, but uh, other, other other songs, uh, they all of them, um, uh, the lyrics of them belong to the known authors of the past, and the, um, the songs themselves, they're named after the actual poem, so it's kind of easy to track. Okay. Uh, it means that uh, darkness, uh, Byron's darkness, uh, it, it's so such a long poem, so I had to split it into two parts. So that, that's why the part one and part two exists. Okay. Because okay. the I, I wanted to cover the entire poem and it was quite big, so I just made two songs out of it. Uh, but let's so let's say that you've finished a song and that you have finished a certain theme. What what does that give you? Hmm. I would say uh, that um, it's very, very similar to me uh, as to painting um, maybe a, an artwork to, in general, painting something because uh, uh, the uh, the palette which I use, like musical palette and the expressions which I applied, that was my perception, my kind of snapshot of this particular feeling of this particular topic at that moment. So let's say uh, I'm I'm saying in this way because. I might be revisiting the same emotion later on in my life, and that might be different colors or different touches to it. Mm-hmm. So at least, I mean, I encapsulated my vision of of the topic as of yeah. now. You think that maybe I'm I'm just guessing it, but you think that by doing this sort of music and you know focusing on the dark aspects, do you think that you give the what you call it, the, the negative emotions, you think that you give them form in somehow so that it's easier to re- relate to in general? Uh, perhaps, perhaps that's, that's too. Um, but in general, uh, I think it, it for me, it, it, it's very, it, it bears very uh, descriptive character as well. So I would say so. Yeah, definitely. So if I will be revisit my own stuff later on, which I, I sometimes do, not really often, but sometimes I do, uh, definitely, it brings to me very, very similar like feelings or emotions which I felt back then. So yeah, yeah, that that actually that makes sense what you said. How do you go by and making this sort of music? Because I mean, I make music too, but for me to to make a song that's slow and more than eight minutes long that's that's like really fucking testing me, you know? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I can't do that. I mean, I. I for me, it's it's like almost painful to play slowly. So, how how do you do that? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, yeah, and it's actually very hard to answer uh, because I like sp- if we speak in general about the the slow things, the slow music. So I observed that I like the slower songs more. Really, really early when uh, even when I was like a teenager and I started uh, to listen to to metal stuff and in general. So absurd, like even within the Metallica uh, collection of things, uh, even mm-hmm. even even within this, I like the slower songs more. So let's say uh, the Harris, uh, Harris of Sorrow, the slower one, uh, the but but no, it's, it shouldn't be the ballad. It's, I'm not speaking about the ballads because they usually right. swell slow, but like heavy and slow. Mm. So like uh, as I mentioned, Harvester of Sorrow is a good example of that, or the thing that should be. So these things are very kind of impending and very slow, and uh, and they have this very specific groove to them too. So uh, and definitely how they constructed, it really sounds uh, dark. 
Yeah. Uh, so when after that, after I was like in a in a more kind of trash metal of of, of things, uh, I suddenly got around the doom metal thing. So it was almost instant click, because that was exactly in uh, in essence what I liked about uh, about the heavy music in um, within the other fa- faster bands. Like of course. Uh, I'm not only listening since then only to to slow stuff, uh, so definitely I'm really up for a very nice uh, like technical death metal and, and stuff. So it's not a, like a limitation or some yeah. sort of um, you know pretty much it's not a limitation to me. So I'm only listening to this kind of slow things. Uh, but uh, th- but that's I think that uh, the composition of things uh, in the same type of, of matter like in a slow uh, and heavy part so that definitely came from my uh, musical preference as well because i like to listen to that more than to other things so i think that that's why also composing that kind of stuff uh, so so you don't have to get into a certain vibe or anything like that you can like you can come up with an idea and then you just go home uh, after work let's say and then you just <laughs> if these fucking slow riffs uh, <laughs> or how does it work uh, yeah that, that might be uh, also like this way as you mentioned mm-hmm. uh, uh, that could be also different different ways actually because sometimes uh, I need to, uh, to actually prepare myself because I kind of mm-hmm. have a very um, hint idea about like faint idea about what I would like to uh, write about mm-hmm. Uh, but not necessarily exactly have the right colors and tools like in my in my mind. So then then I'll probably listen to some related stuff or sometimes completely unrelated stuff. I, I might I might watch a movie mm-hmm. uh, with kind of dark vibe to give me some um, I don't know spice to it uh, to mm-hmm. to get the proper feeling. Or uh, sometimes I listen to completely unrelated music which gives me as well impression on, on how how I, I how I would proceed yeah you know. so uh, the good example might be that I, I know I might listen to some uh, trip hop stuff mm-hmm. which then triggers me to write some quiet angry uh, funeral slash death kind of song right, right. it's very aggressive kind of uh, approach to it uh, so it could be that it's almost like a relationship that you do things you might not even like just to get you know into the pissed off mood oh actually i never do the things i don't like so usually uh, uh at least like for for as a triggers uh, they're not necessary for me but sometimes sometimes i do them uh-huh. or sometimes they uh even without intention so like i don't think about i'm writing something now but i i'm going across some interesting stuff it can be artwork or something Mm-hmm. Which gives me an idea suddenly, right. but usually it never happens in the way. So I kind of I, I punish myself, I torture myself with something what I really don't like <laughs> to, to to produce something out of it, because then then it would be then it might be even counterproductive. So yeah. uh, so I might actually produce something what I wouldn't be happy after myself. Right, right, right. Yeah, I was just thinking about it because I remember. Uh... I heard somewhere that Slayer were inspired by glam bands because they hated them so much that so they wanted, you know, to, you know, do something angry as a reaction almost. Yeah, I mean, it, it might work if, if somebody uh, specifically doing, uh, constructing something what's supposed to be absolute uh, negative to, or like oppos- opposite to, to, to some aspect, right? The person who... Uh, who listens to Funeral Doom? Do they need to? Does that require a certain personality? Yes and no. I would say it's definitely, uh, as you mentioned uh, yourself. So um, it's sometimes uh, quite painful to to play or to listen to this kind of slow stuff, mm-hmm. and many people uh, become really bored because of this. And I would say, as I mentioned in the beginning of our talk, that the palette of the uh, Doom uh, spectrum is so wide, apparently. Mm. So from from the, uh, let's say, person who are not really deep into this this particular subgender, it might look that, okay, we have maybe two, three, maybe four subgenders within. So let's say we have uh, Death Doom, we have Funeral Doom, we have like Stoner, Sludge, uh, and maybe something else, right? But even within this 
very kind of limited amount of them. Even even palette within them is quite quite big. So even if we if we take the funeral doom part, even within it there are a lot of col- kind of colors in the spectrum. So that might be slightly more brighter sounding bands and heavier bands as well. So like darker sound bands and more aggressive sound bands. So within it it's a very big spectrum. So some some summer bands they deliver the ideas of uh, melancholy perhaps. Yeah. While the others, they they specifically aim for uh, darker things like we do, like uh, like I don't know, suicide, death, uh, self destruction, whatever. If you wouldn't be doing funeral doom, what what sort of music would you be doing? Do you think? I'm thinking I'm thinking that might be uh, uh, two things. That might be death metal, and that might be uh, uh, even three things. So uh, death metal, as I mentioned, uh, dark jazz. And uh, perhaps some sort of uh, psy band, dark ambient ish. Mm-hmm. But go, go trance and psy band, that might be uh, as well my picks, like from electronic side of things. All right. You've got a new album is coming out. When, when is it? In uh... Yeah, June 25th. And if, if you look at how that writing, how that turned out compared to your your last release. How would you say that you've matured and the music has changed? Or mm, Yeah, definitely I can say that. Uh, also because uh, some time actually passed since uh, the previous release. I think it was like five or six years or something. And because as well, that was exactly the time when, um, when I moved to Sweden. So a lot of things were kind of um, needs to be settled down a bit. So that was like a big change in my life too. So uh, for some time I didn't write much or uh, my writings were scarce. So, so it was kind of maybe let's say one or two riffs. So I specifically opened up a project like in my recording software where I just dumped all the uh, ideas and riffs like in one uh, big project. So they were not connected within each other. Just let's say uh, I have some sort of mood or I am because if, uh, I remember, especially like in the beginning, because I was so busy with um, adapting to renewed circumstances, I didn't have the uh, proper kind of, you know, uh, mood to just, okay, I'm, I'm inspired right now to write something, so I'm sitting and writing it. So I kind of sometimes forced myself, okay, I need right now to sit and try to compose something, right? And that where this project as well came uh, in place. So some of the things were produced in this project, um, as well, kind of force myself attempt to to write stuff. Not not all of them are were good. Uh, this attempt, so some of them were scraped, but there were some interesting things which I actually used. So I would say the upcoming release, uh, the Riptide. Um, so that was a a bit longer build thing. It was a slight because it was very very extended in in the time. I think uh, all the songs. Like and releases before and after because right now as well I'm I'm um, writing new stuff and composing kind of new album which is uh, closer to be ready than even myself thinks. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, yeah, so all of them before and after were I mean specific, like so- song wise let's say because if in terminology of songs it's slightly easier to manipulate with um, with definition of time right mm. because album is album is big. Yeah. So song wise. All of the songs before and after were completed way faster. So sometimes I can complete 20 minute song in uh, two days. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it take maybe a week. But I mean, this uh, the uh, the main track uh, from Riptide, which is spinning the chasm. So that took me years because I was assembling that piece by piece and then rewriting something, reassembling something like I know big right. piece of Lego things. So sometimes I become I didn't like some parts, so I replaced them right. or, or changed them. So that was a bit bigger thing. But in the, in the long term as well, how I see it right now, uh, because the work on it was completed uh, more than a year ago. Even, yeah, more than even, probably even two years back. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think that actually turned out quite nicely. So I'm not uh, disappointed when I'm looking at that work. So maybe it's not a patchwork of things, which I just basically I know, roughly assembled together. No, I don't think so, because as well, that took nice thinking to it after, uh, regarding the reassembly. Yeah. So I think with this release also, uh, I started to look into 
different territories probably apply some different techniques and effects uh, within my writing too so i think the things became more complex than they were before and the trend uh, actually is keeping up so it means that the things after this release also would be a bit complex in a way so it's not becoming lighter in any sense i mean i mean in general music of of suffering also it becomes more kind of complex mm-hmm. more refined but also in in the some extent probably even even darker that's actually um what i'm happy about it because uh, many bands which i like and which i like also in uh, my childhood my uh, teenage years so with with years with experience you feel that they become they they they, they write stuff uh in a lighter way so it's like uh it was really angry and cool and like very from the heart and from the soul in the beginning and then it becomes something what you can watch on MTV pretty much. Yeah. So so that always made me really super sad about this uh, and uh, I'm happy that it's not happening to me yet. So it <laughs> actually it actually goes to in, in, a, in a better way so it becomes more complex and yeah. this also may imply that the new work may have let's say these people who liked my first album may not like this one and as well the people who specifically like the the new work uh, may may say that oh damn it like the first album was kind of too lightweight in a way Mm -hmm. right because i mean the uh, i'd say it's you know it's really boring when you see a band that as you said you know mature but then they reach the the point where they make the the crappy album (laughs) which yeah. <laughs> every band almost seems to be doing if they've been about it long enough. But it's also boring when they're, I mean, they, it's it's a it's a sort of catch-22 situation for many too, because, I mean, if you're doing the same album over and over and over, then it's also pointless and boring as well. So it's a very thin line to walk on. Indeed, indeed. And uh, you know, I, I may say that sometimes for some bands, uh, it's actually even way more efficient and even better idea to just keep doing at least the same level of things mm. and to try them to try to alternate it because uh, either either they will produce a weaker record yeah. or, or because they put something at risk so I, I may say the interesting example of that would be a uh, Finnish Demelich so mm-hmm. they did just one and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the guys are just scared to produce something new after the 99 yeah, because yeah, yeah. who knows maybe it would be weaker and uh, that would yeah. be bad thing for them yeah that, that, that's the problem when when the band becomes too cult i guess they have too much to live up to <laughs> can be can be yeah. Uh, yeah however however of course there are artists who are either they uh, because the change <laughs> might be coming from uh, two points so first of all it might be because the band doesn't care really much so they uh, mm-hmm. they play what they like so okay. then they are free of course to change to whatever they want yeah. Uh, and the other point is that if, if the band tries to follow the the hype, so they sp- like specifically adjust their genre or, or like their aim on, on listener to 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 please the listener. So that's uh, that's disgusting to me to be honest. And but yeah. that happens all the time around. So if you look at the music scene today and how it was maybe ten years ago when when Suffer Yourself started, what are your impressions? I would say that even if if uh, it would be like fast forward back and forth uh, from uh, like ten years back, I would say not many things like dramatically changed. Actually, the all the big bands which were big then they're still kind of I mean within the genre like the mm. big names, mm. they're still there. They still exist and they uh, produce decent records to the moment. Uh, so let's say I'm referring to. Uh, perhaps like, the, the, as of like known names like Evoke and Esoteric, we have also uh, maybe Shape of Despair. So I don't really like the like the very late, uh, latest work, but it's it's decent. So I mean, it's not really bad. So uh, from the perspective of the scene, not much of things actually changed. Uh, from the perspective of music in general, well, black metal was big then. Yeah. It's still big now, and it doesn't look like it's gonna be like reduced in the future um, what what was what was actually pleasing to me personally is that in a couple of last years maybe starting from 2015-ish somewhere 14-ish the um, old school does revival thing actually happened 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's uh, kind of going to slightly to the descent of it, of it uh, at the moment, but I'm really happy that now, at least for some time, there was a um, um, splash of interesting bands uh, within the genre, so that I really appreciate about that. Uh, right now, it looks like the old school black metal revival uh, thing is coming now, so we may uh, very soon see a bunch of uh, clones from uh, Burzum stuff. Uh, again? Yeah, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, and uh, Mayhem and all the kind of very raw no. sounding um, and angry kid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least the tendency which I observe right now it tells that it's probably will become a big thing soon. Oh damn it! I think the Dark Throne and the Buddhism clones they sucked already back in the nineties. Oh well. Yeah, well, there you go. Hype is hype. Yeah. What sort of lyrics will we never see in "Suffer Yourself"? Hmm. Uh, I mean, definitely, it would be pointless to uh, to apply the ly- lyrics which would be um, driven in a happy way. Mm-hmm. If they would be driven in that way, it would be most likely as a you know a manifestation of the insane person being happy about being insane. Right. Right. Perhaps, right. but probably nothing which is a uh, very kind of uh, life cherishing or uh, or positive in any uh, sense that the, the sense which I described in in a, in a way. So probably nothing like that is to be expected, and and, of, uh, and I think I think that not necessarily we will see any kind of really gory, like more primitive stuff of things uh, coming up. Uh, I mean, typically what uh, grindcore bands put in. I don't think so. That's okay. also happening. No cannibal corpse lyrics then either. Yeah, well, uh, sometimes I do some small injections of kind of these things, but not to the point so it becomes you know kind of. Anatomy workbook of sorts. Right, right. And what what do you think is the best and the worst thing about being a, a underground mu- musician? Uh, the best thing is that actually uh, uh, you can work on uh, whatever you want, and uh, you are the judge to yourself because uh, because on the ground on the ground is is like that. So it's basically produce whatever you like, and it's up to you because you don't depend on. Uh, on commerce in this case, so it's completely to to your taste how you drive things and how you paint uh, things, right? Mm. Um, and the worst thing, of course, is basically as well comes from the uh, from the previous point I described is that you probably will never get known if if that's a problem because it's not even a problem for many people who who are uh, working in underground. I mean, it's enough that people who are like basically working in the same kind of scene. They just know each other and they as well can support each other and then I think it's just enough. But uh, let's say if somebody is very uh, upset about uh, not being able to participate in some very big festival alongside with a very big band, so uh, that probably that that author should change priorities in the music drastically. Mm. Uh, A completely different question. If you could choose, how would you like to die? Specifically in that context, I don't think I thought about this because before now. Okay. But to give you something from the uh, from the top of of my mind, which like the first thing I thought about is uh, perhaps to observe the uh, maybe uh, cosmic collapse of the Earth. Uh huh. So let's say maybe an asteroid or 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 nuclear war happening or something. Okay. So you want you want you want the planet to go extinct, or the planet uh, life, or the entire planet to blow up? Uh, not necessary, uh, but uh, well, as you as you asked about the the preferred way of of, of kind of of death, um, mm-hmm. that would be interesting to spectate. That what I would be saying, but I'm <laughs> not actually. Uh, I don't think that I specifically. Um, uh, advocating the extinction of the of the humankind. So I, I, of course, I'm saying that many of the things which which are humans as we are, so they are pointless and useless. Mm-hmm. But I think the life uh, the, it was before and it will have, it will be after us. So it's just a, a flow of the nature and flow of time. So I have nothing against nature actually. So uh, a temporary eradication of of human life, perhaps. Yeah, that's completely fine. <laughs> okay. Where can people find your album when it's out? 
the recommended source would be our Bandcamp, but also uh, on all streaming services, uh, pretty much. Plus, additionally, the uh, like physical copies, I will, I will have them, of course, so that will be uh, vinyl and CD. And they will be also available on the uh, British label Aesthetic Desk.